real quick. My youngest kid is in high school right now, and I wanted to build him a corner desk in the playroom. Now, I wanted to take the bed that's there, it has a trundle under it, and move it into the other corner. Now, the other corner already has a bed in it, too. It's a bunk bed. Now, I've tried to sell this bunk bed online, but no buyers. So I thought I would just repurpose the bed since it's real oak and see what we come up with. So this way I don't even have to buy a desk. I'm going to repurpose the bunk bed into a new desk. So you let me know in the end how I did. So the first thing I did was measure the wall where the desk was going. I wanted it to be short of the window, but take up all of the adjacent wall. It is with those measurements I started all my cutting. So you should do the same. Starting with the cross beams that held the bunk bed together, I would cut them six inches shorter than my measurements. This way the legs that these will tie into will make up the difference of those six inches that I just subtracted. My wife only gave me one stipulation, and that was it had to be able to be taken apart so we could take it with us if we ever moved. And with these joining brackets, I just thought in my head, wow, this would solve the problem. And since I'm making this up as I go along, I thought, Hey, why not repurpose these too? Also, with the brackets holding the desk together, it would look more professional like a store-bought desk. Since the end of the bunk beds were already designed to support the bed, I would cut them down and use them to support the desktop. They already looked really nice with a modern design, so I would just shorten each set. Now in all my desktop builds, I make the top of the desk about two feet wide. It's just a random number I choose, but whatever size you decide to make the desktop, just ensure you cut your support legs a bit smaller so the top of the desk overhangs on each side. This will allow you to push the top of the desk up against the wall without the legs being obstructed by wall trim. You will be limited by the number of pieces you have to work with, so don't just start cutting the wood apart. Besides, hitting screws with your saw blade dulls the blades quickly. So in this next step, let me show you the best way to remove plugs so you can access the screws below and save a lot more wood in the process. Your first step is to take a small drill bit and drill a small hole through the center of each plug. You don't want to use a bit that will destroy the plug or make it break apart, so choose a small one. Your second step is to take some drywall screws and screw halfway into each plug. Then, with a shingle bar or a cat's paw, simply pull up and out the screws. Now, if in the process of your drilling, you get a bit of sawdust down in the hole, you can attempt to blow it out or just grab a can of compressed air and a quick squirt will clear out the pocket. Now, make some marks through the holes of the ends you just removed so you can drill pilot holes. This will help you align and ensure you don't crack any wood. To make the ends match, I removed two of the slats on one side so they would mirror the opposite side. You can do this after you attach it if you have a jigsaw, but I thought I would get a straighter cut if I used the fence on my bandsaw. Screw your matching leg on. And now you are done your first end piece. Now repeat that process to get the other side of the desk. Although the bunk bed wood is hard oak, I still feared that having no support in the middle at the elbow of the desk would allow for a slight bend. I doubt this will happen, but I bought a ply sheet to go under the desktop for extra support. In the end, I am glad I did this as it helped out immensely when putting the boards on the top of the desk together. I just got lucky here. So with the measurements that I took at the beginning of this video, I cut my desktop to fit it. Your middle leg will be a standalone leg, but it needs to be the exact same size as your other legs. So I laid it beside one end of the desk supports and marked it. I used a scrap piece to make sure I was flush before I made my mark. Also make sure you align your locking brackets when doing this process. Next, you need to take out one of the locking brackets for the adjacent side of your standalone leg. It should screw out easily. Take the standalone leg and align it to the leg you just stole the bracket from. We are going to mark out the area we need to route from the bracket itself. Simply trace out the shape. Remember, this is done catty corner, not on the opposite side of the other bracket.
Next, route out the shape you traced out for the bracket holder and then once done, screw it into place. You can now take the standalone leg and attach your cross planks to each leg support. If you're doing this alone, you can use the tabletop that you've cut earlier to help you hold everything up while you do this. I decided to use the other cross supports as the edge of the desktop because they already had a built-in lip that I could use. This worked out great and I only had enough to do the front of the desk, but since this was going up against a wall, it was not an issue. I laid all the wood I had left on the top of the desk so I could get a measurement for how much wood I had and how much the desktop needed. I felt I was going to be a little short if I did not use the wood that seemed to be not finished because it was under other pieces when the, it was finished at the factory. So I did a quick sand job and stained to see how noticeable this would be. I looked out and it covered up nicely so I would have just enough wood without having to use the bunk bed ladder. I started in the center of the desktop with the lipped pieces by cutting 45 degree angles and then joining them together with a pocket jig. And I continued this process all the way around the front of the desk until the front was completely covered. Okay, I am making this up as I go along. So I came up a little bit short with my ply sheet, but no big deal. I just need to make sure I use a scrap piece and all the legs are aligned equally. Now, remember when one of my stipulations was that I needed to be able to take this apart? Well, I took the dowels that were between the top and the bottom bunks and I placed a hole through the top of the ply sheet into each leg. This would anchor the desktop and keep it from moving without having to screw it down. This would make it removable. With my dowels in place, I cut the back piece of the desk. Well, it just so happens that the gap that I left there by mistake was a perfect resting place for the back piece, and it would hide the ply sheet as well. No, I did not plan this. I just lucked out. I only had one board this length as well, so I decided to rip it in half and use it on both back angles of the desk. Once ripped and cut, I screwed them into place to complete the perimeter of the desktop. Now I could fill in the rest of the surface of the desktop. I flipped the desktop perimeter upside down to ensure it was as flat as possible when I was joining the top of the boards. While looking at this, I wanted to continue the 45 degree angle all the way to the corner of the desk, but I was worried I did not have enough wood to keep cutting off the ends. So I decided to do an alternating weave. Once cut, I would simply use my pocket jig to join them. With the pocket jig, these pieces were pretty secure and very strong, as this was hardwood oak. This is when I realized that I probably didn't need the ply sheet underneath the top of the desk. But oh well, the ply sheet made tying everything together much easier in the long run. I did want to let you know, before I decided to do it this way, I realized that each piece of wood I was going to use had a slight bevel to it. So if I decided to make this one big smooth surface, I would have to cut away each beveled edge, and I am almost sure I would not have had enough wood for that. So my solution was to just join them all together and place a piece of plexiglass over the top of the desk. This would allow my son to write on paper without his pencil taking a dive through the paper if he hit a groove. So with the top all joined together, I placed some glue on the back side and then with a brad gun, I attached the ply sheet to the desktop. To this point, I had not flipped the desk over, so I was actually worried at this point. But I think I even impressed myself with how this came out. So before I ran upstairs and put this thing together, I had one last thing to do. And that was to cut the plexiglass that I had just mentioned earlier. So I simply laid this on top of the desktop and slid it over just a little bit and cut it with a jigsaw. So the last step was to put the bed, I mean now, desk, together. So this desk comes apart as easy as it is put together. This will allow it to be moved in the future. With the desk complete, the purple panda can now get back to his streaming. Yeah, don't ask. 
Trying to use as much as the wood as possible, I also built a little desktop shelf. This little pile of wood was all I had left. As always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.